Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Tega Industries Limited Q1 FY23 results conference call organized by Orient Capital. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nachiket Kare from Orient Capital. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the q and FY23 earnings conference call of Tega Industries Limited. Today on this call, we have Mr. Mehul Mohanka, Managing Director and Group CEO, along with Mr. Sayed Imam, Director of Global Product Management Group and Head of Sales. Also accompanied by Mr. Manoj Kumar Agarwal, Director of Global Finance and Chief Financial Officer. Before we proceed uh, to the, begin the call, just a small disclaimer that the conference call may contain some forward-looking statements, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of the The actual results may differ materially. A detailed safe harbor statement has also been given on the company's investor presentation, which was uploaded to the stock exchanges today. I would now like to hand over the call to the management. Uh, so, Mr. Mayhul, can you please take it? Yeah, thank you, Nachiket. So, good afternoon and a warm welcome to all the participants on the call. I am joined uh, today, this afternoon, with, by two of my colleagues, uh, Mr. Yavar Imam, who's the Director of Global Product Management Group, and Mr. Manoj Agarwal, who's our CFO. I hope everyone by now has had an opportunity to go through our financial results and investor presentations, which have been uploaded on the stock exchanges as well as on our website. We are happy to present the financial results of the first quarter of this financial year. This quarter was marked by a bleak global macro environment affected by the geopolitical issues in Europe, the recessionary outlook in leading economies, the volatility in currencies and inflationary pressures on raw materials. In unfavorable circumstances, the underlying strength in our business is evident in our performance. On a year-on-year -year terms, we have delivered double-digit growth across all our key metrics. Since this is the first time that we are declaring our Q1 results after listing, I would like to explain a crucial factor in our revenue pattern. As seen in our full year results published last quarter, our revenue builds up through, throughout the financial year, starting from a moderate Q1 and finishing higher in Q4. Hence, the performance analysis of quarter on quarter versus year on year for our business will be more relevant. For the past few quarters, the disruption in supply chain coupled with rising fuel and commodity costs affected our margins. In Q1, there was some respite in logistic costs which has reduced since the last quarter. However, the costs are still higher than the normal prices from a pre-COVID era, and commodity inflation persists, as well as raw material prices remain elevated. As a business, we pass through any cost escalations to our customers with a lag of a few quarters. We are encouraged by the opportunities in front of us and have a strong pipeline with a robust order book of INR 3,004 million as of June 30th, 2022, compared to INR 2,359 million as on March 31, 2022. We are committed to building a true homegrown global powerhouse in our industry. Now I would like to hand over to Mr. Manoj Agarwal, CFO, to take you through the financial performance of the company for the period under review. Thank you, Mr. Mohanka, and a very good afternoon to all the participants. I will share the highlights of our performance for the quarter, following which we will be happy to respond to your queries. Company reported a total revenue from operation at Rs. 2,444 million, delivering a strong growth of 41.1% YOY. Material margin also improved by 200 bips sequentially from quarter 4 March 22 to the quarter of June 22. Hence, we have been able to pass through some of the price increase to our vendors. To our suppliers. Operating EBITDA stands at 461 million and has almost doubled from Rs. 235 million in the corresponding quarter last year. 
operating EBITDA improved from 14% to 19%, YOY, showing an improvement of 500 BIPs points on a YOY basis. The improvement of EBITDA is due to higher volume that resulting in better absorption of fixed cost also. Other expenses have gone up from 461 million last uh, quarter last year to INR 588 million in this quarter. Most of the growth on account of higher volume only and some element of price as well. PAT has delivered a strong growth of 94% YOY and stand at 230 million INR from 118 million INR corresponding quarter. PAT margin is up from 7% to 9.5% and increase of 250 basis points. If I have been to exclude the non-operating income, the PAT has gone up from 3.33% to 10.77% on YOA basis. Now we can open the floor for the Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Sandeep Tulsian from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, very good afternoon. Uh, the first question is uh, pertaining to the volume versus uh, value growth that we have seen in the current quarter. Uh, we highlight that with a lag of two quarters, uh, we will be able to pass through and definitely uh, Tulsian, your voice in a top end growth. Can you repeat, please? Uh, is this better? Uh, yes, please go ahead. Okay, so uh, my first question was on the value versus volume growth that you've seen in the first quarter and price increases that you have taken. Uh, we did see a very strong top line growth of 41%. So if you could just break it up to understand uh, how much of price increases you've taken, what kind of realization increases built in this number, if any more price increases are yet to uh, come through, which could not be completely taken in this quarter. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, so out of this 41%, actually, there are three components. One is the exchange side. In the exchange, we have lost about 3% YOY. And on the price side, we take an increase of 13, around 30 to 14% on the price side, and the volume is about 30%. So it's largely more volume understood. And also, if you could help us understand between your different segments, uh, mill liners and non mill liners, how the growth has been, and within mill liners, uh, specifically Dyna Prime range, how that has grown during the quarter. And if you can also give some uh, qualitative perspective, uh, which are the geographies where you have seen growth from any particular uh, over category which is growing faster versus other, how do you see this number panning out for you? A qualitative uh, perspective on the same, please. Yeah. So on the three broad uh, category which we talked about, Dana Prime mill segment and non Dana Prime mill segment and the normal segments. On Dana Prime side, uh, on absolute terms, we have grown about 157%, which consists of volume about 150%, price 10%, and exchange loss of, loss of 10%. Having said that, uh, just to put on record that if you can recall last year, first quarter, there were some challenges in Chile in supply chain. Uh, uh, side. Mm. So there we, we have not been able to, you know, build up about 15 crores of uh, revenue. So that is because the the trajectory is showing very high in terms of growth of Dana Prime in this quarter, which will certainly normalize in the coming quarters. On the mill side, non Dana Prime, we have grown about 32%. Again, 18% is more of a business growth and 17% is about price growth. Non mill side, we have grown 15%. YOY, uh, that is 8% is about uh, business growth and about 7% is a price uh, growth in that. Okay. And any perspective on the OR versus geography versus any new customer edition that you can uh, help us to understand how this growth can run out uh, for the financial year 23? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Imam, will you take that call? Yeah. 
as far as uh, oil is concerned and the oil we are we are concentrating on copper and uh, uh, gold ore as we have right from the beginning from the ipo we have been uh, informing that 75% is there so our focus is still on uh, uh, gold and copper and with iron ore as a, uh, a small pro- uh, portion of that uh the process that we have put in as far as uh, build up of uh, identification uh, trials and uh, 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 turning it into a full uh, uh, bill as far as dana prime is concerned is going on com- uh, across geographies earlier it was uh, limited to latam now we are doing it across ge- geography uh, we have also uh, concentrated on uh, the business development with putting someone actively involved with business development so our business development activity is uh, very strong and some of the numbers which you are getting is because of the uh, increase in the business development activity and so and last uh, question what i have uh, is on the logistics and the uh, capex cost logistics if you can i think in the previous call you have been pretty transparent uh, in highlighting how uh, you know this cost cannot be completely passed through but as these costs uh, will come down which we are seeing uh, you know what kind of margin impact uh, this has had in the current quarter and uh, how much it can cool off to and also on the annual capex number we had given an overall guidance of uh, 250 crores to 270 crore over a 3 year period so how much will you incur in the current financial year out of that thank you yeah thank you sandeep so on the logistics side what we see that uh, the peak which was in quarter 3 last financial year from there it is on the down trend when i say down trend it has gone down at least by 20 to 22% of the peak but still very high from the from the normalization uh, you know uh, rates what we had at a pre covid levels uh, yes that has a that is an impact on 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 our margin if you see the Uh, margin what we had in the march quarter from there we have able to build up about 200 plus basis point on a quarter to quarter basis so normalization of logistic cost from the peak is giving some advantage to us in terms of you know overall margin increase and we still believe that uh, this will go f- little further down as well having said that we do not know how china taiwan uh, issue will ramp up because that will may have again a big impact if it happens to be a kind of you know a disaster otherwise uh, we believe that logistic cost going to be little more normalized in that sense so mix of normalization and passing through the customers will help us to take the margin to a level of 60% uh, which is what we aspire for on the capex side we are still on the uh, same same kind of stand what we took in the last call as of now on the chili side we already acquired land uh, having having spent about 25 crores towards that and and the rest of the year will be going to kind of spent on the capex side as planned and we we'll talk about about 250 crores of capex plan for next three years which is still going to happen on a quarter or a yearly basis uh, most spend will happen in first two years and third year will be little lower got it All right. Thank you so much, uh, sir, for taking these questions. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. To ask a question, please press star and one on your phone. We have our next question from the line of Diran from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. If you can quantify the Dyna Prime number for the quarter. Sure. And even Dana Prime quantity of revenue is 453 million against 176 million corresponding quarter last year. And what about non Dana Prime mill liner and the non mill liner? So let me break down for you. So on the revenue side for the current year, Dana Prime is 453 million. Non Dana Prime mill liner is 1389 million, and non mill is 466 million. Okay, and so gross margins. Uh, if you if if we compare on a YY basis, it is down 180 bips. 
So what explains the fall in the gross margin? What is down? So gross margins. If I see gross margins on a YOI basis, uh, last year Q1 as compared to this year Q1, it is still down 180 bips. Yes. So as I said that if you see the last year, the price traction on the upward side started from quarter two onwards. So the price impact was not there in quarter one last year. And the price ramp up started from the quarter two. Hence, if you see the trajectory of the margin, the margin started going down from quarter one onwards until March last year. And from March last year to this quarter, we have again coming up gradually. So, so, so that way to see 60.42% was in quarter one last year and March was 56.58. Now from 56.58, we have come up to 58.70. So in that sense, we have been able to you know, transfer the cost to the customers as we said, it will take a little longer time because of the very abnormal increase in prices. So we are just coming to the 60% you know, trajectory uh, uh, in the next one to two quarters. Okay. And sir, and lastly, if I see sir on a other expense side, on a quarter on quarter basis, despite the fall in the revenue, our other expense on Q1 has remained elevated. Yeah, so see other expenses, mix of the fixed cost and your variable cost. Now there are two elements if you see otherwise, uh, the inflation environment is very, very big. So all the inflation globally is very high. In fact, it's the other way around that inflation is double digit outside India, which is the most cost prone countries, right? That is impacted the cost in terms of other expenses and also some of the volume cost sitting there. So in other ways, we have been able to manage the inflation environment by keeping the cost at the same level what we had last quarter. Okay, so we are still maintaining our EBITDA margin guidance of 21 to 23%, right? For the full year. You are right. Okay, sir, just lastly, since our 85 to 90% of revenue is export generated, and we have seen, you know, rupee depreciating almost 5 to 6 percent in June quarter. Then, too, sir, we have reported an exchange loss uh, that you stated earlier. So, what is the reason for that? So, in our numbers, a lot of exchanges are there. So, in the revenue, what has happened that on the India side, dollar side, we have gained about 20 million in revenue. Okay. But when we have translated the overseas uh, revenue into INR, there is a loss of about 75 million. So Indian dollar side we have gained, but while we convert our revenue to INR, we have lost about 75 million. So hence 75 loss, 20 Indian side gain is making 55 million of net loss as far as uh, revenue is concerned. So which are the three major revenues, sir, in which we book our sales apart from dollar? So, Indi so India, we have dollar, then Euro, Audi and Caddy. And as far as our other entity is concerned, which is Chile and South Africa, that's in peso and jar locally. So we need to convert that into INR while we make our accounts, right? So there's a transaction loss of 75 million. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone. We have our next question from the line of Bala Subramanian from Arihan Capital. Please Good afternoon, sir. Con congratulations for good set of numbers. Sir, our exports uh, uh, value growth uh, shows 50% and volume growth uh, minus 27% as per the exam. And the major of exports uh, in Australia around 44% and Netherlands and South Africa and Canada and remaining other countries. Uh, sir, like uh, uh, what kind of challenges you are facing uh, while uh, transporting these countries right now? So what is the container's cost uh, average? It's kind of 20 to 25,000 uh, for 14 uh, fleet containers. So let me try to answer because I think uh, I'm not able to clearly heard you because of land disturbance. So when you talk about the challenges in, 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 in exporting the material outside India, so that challenges a little bit eased out this financial year. So even challenge was there last year also we've been able to plan in advance to ensure that our customers should not suffer right and we have not filled any of the you know supply to any of our customer worldwide now from there things are much better as of today as i said that the prices of the container has gone down from 20 from from by by 22 percent from the peak of quarter three last financial year so availability of containers 
even price both are on a on a on a downtrend trajectory but again we are keeping a very very close watch on that how it pan up sir it shows that uh, 27% uh, volume degrowth so you are exporting more value added products or when is the 27% volume you are talking about uh, quarter to quarter uh, yes sir compared to last quarter so that's what i think our md also initially said that if you have seen our march quarter result our is a lumpy business right hence we we ramp up from quarter 1 to the quarter 4 so quarter 1 tend to be lower and quarter 4 tend to be higher as a business so hence comparing with the quarter and quarter may not give a good direction to you even you can compare why you why gives a better direction as far as our business is concerned yes sir, i'm talking about a year on year compared to last quarter last year quarter last quarter we have grown 41% oh okay sir i'm talking about the volume growth uh, in exports So volume growth, I said, now we have grown about 30% of volume growth. Why you why? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So could you please give, give break up for Chile revenue, Dyna Prime and others? So I think that much of revenue will just uh, no uh, maybe very we are just going in very detail. So Dyna Prime basically Chile what they they do about close to about 80 to 85% in the meal segment is Dyna Prime, and about 15% they do in non 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 Dyna Prime segment. ओके सर ओके काट इट थैंक यू थैंक यू वी हैव अ नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ दिगन थारिया फ्रॉम ग्रीन एज वेल्थ प्लीज गो अहेड या सर सो माय क्वेश्चन वाज सो दैट यू नो आई अंडरस्टैंड दैट वी यू नो मोस्ट ऑफ आवर सेल्स कम फ्रॉम द माइनिंग इंडस्ट्री बट विद इन माइनिंग इफ यू कैन गिव सम फ्लेवर ऑफ uh you know how much comes from uh, you know copper aluminum and uh, you know as in within non ferrous which are the major drivers and and you know within each of them do we have you know major clients where we can still make inroads and ensure that you know our growth for future years is high so in our business basically as rightly said we deal with more of the mining producing uh, industries so on the metal side we deal majorly on the gold and copper side right and gold is a, is a major portion of our revenue tends to be 40 to 45% and then followed by copper which is 20 to 22% and third is about uh, your uh, iron ore which is about 15% these three are the major segment for our revenue driver and then rest of the you know uh, about i would say about 20 15 20% comes from all all set of metals you talk about platinum you know titanium diamond zinc aluminum so all lot of you know metals are there but the major contribution comes from gold and copper which is about 65% okay 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 sir so uh, so you know i understand that uh, you know in uh, you know gold maybe we would be quite dominant because you know gold is anyways very small quantities are mined every year but then you know in iron ore and aluminum Uh, i think that our market share in these metals would be very low because these are very very large industries especially the iron ore and the aluminum so is there any scope uh, you know like uh, is is there much more scope than what we are there in these industries or the products they use are different from the products that we have in case of mill liners or conveyor products okay yeah uh, yours will you take this yeah, i i will take this manoj okay see 75% of the uh, liner business is in copper and gold the reason being that copper to mine 1 ton of copper you have to uh, process around 200 tons of ore in gold for to get uh, 10 grams of gold you have to uh, process 1 ton of uh, ore so what what happens is if you look at iron ore and aluminum aluminum is a total different industry the process is different as far as iron ore is concerned iron ore today occurs at a very high grade around the uh, in india we have 67 70% of the grade in globally in brazil and all you have around 40 45% there so they have to be enhanced from 45 to 67 so the Uh, uh mill requirements are much lesser over there compared to other industries okay so 
that is why the uh, our uh, market share is also in gold copper and then i don't know as manoj said the reason being that the process requirement for the liners is accordingly right thank you so much this is very very helpful and very detailed explanation uh so so and with, and in gold and copper would we be present with the top 10 or top 15 mining companies of the world like would we have inroads there or are there some big accounts which we can still crack uh, in the coming yeah. years we are we are i as we had said right from the beginning on the ipo we are just touching this thing because the area which we have opened with dana prime is a billion dollar industry okay for a uh, liner industry for us and we have just uh, started uh, in that and we as uh, manoj said we did around uh, 200 uh, 1 crore last year so there is a huge growth prospect going there and we are in presence in all the top 40 miners of the world okay okay uh, thank you thank you so much for this uh, if i have more questions i'll come back thank you thank you Ladies and gentlemen, to our first star and one on your phone, we have our next question from the line of Alicia Mahavla from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, so good evening. Thank you for taking my question. Um, so, what is your capacity utilization currently? Manoj. Yes, yes. I'm just giving that. So in this quarter one, we are at about sixty-one percent of our capacity utilization. Okay, and for FY twenty-three, except the capex that we're doing in Chile, there's no other capex that we're currently doing. Yes. Okay, and what was the order book number that you mentioned? I missed it. that is we have about close to 300 crores of order and this is executable in one quarter 3 4 months it is about close to 4 months 4 months and um, would you like to quantify what is the based on the current demand also because you said that currently the global environment is kind of bleak uh, what is the kind of volume growth that the company can aspire for for the current year so as we said that we are looking for 15 to 18 percent of cagr in next 3 to 5 years but the idea is always to 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 surpass that okay thank you thank you we have a next question from the line of kevel ashar from dsp investment managers please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity one Uh, Mr. Ashish, you are not audible. Hello, I'm audible. Uh, your voice is breaking, sir. Can Just you speak? Hello. Yes, please go ahead now. Yeah. Uh, so, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, we lost you again. Should we take the next question till then? Now, Mr. Asher. Hello. Hello. Yes. yes. Please go ahead now. Compared to one. Uh, no, I'm sorry, sir. We are not able to hear you. Okay, I'll be back in the queue. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. We'll take our next question from the line of Bhavin Bhavin Vitlani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, could you help us on what has been the uh, freight cost uh, as a percentage of revenue? And uh, we were targeting to uh, move a significant part of our customers from CIF to FOB. And where are we in that journey? so our packing forwarding cost uh, which was about uh, close to 8 uh, standard 8 standard level 8 point because major uh, freight is is, a, is is sitting in the india right so about 8 plus percent was there 
which has come down to close to about 7.25 kind of percentage as of now. With with two impact, one is that the freight trade has gone down, and in the first quarter, what we see that we have also been able to transfer some of the customer into FOB as well. So overall, basically, that gives us a advantage of 50 basis points in this quarter. And uh, sorry for this. Uh, what was uh, the freight rates pre the increase, uh, let's say in FI 19-20? So that was close to about let's say six and a half, six percent kind of things. So as we said last time, that uh, the gap was around 1.5 percent over was coming. So maybe we have been able to manage 50 basis point as of now. We have a still challenge of one percent. Okay, and we expect uh, it to correct it uh, during the course of uh, the next financial year? Uh, so, the idea is to just uh, see that how much we can pass on, let's say about uh, 20 beep, uh, 5 beeps point further. And if there's, if some downtrend continue in the freight side, that may help us to, you know, come to normalize and get it 1% by the year end. But it's a mix of both price correction and the, and the price pass on, both. Sure. Uh, the second question is on the Dyna Prime side. Uh, uh, we were roughly around 30 million uh, last year. Uh, could you give us um, a picture as to uh, where our uh, Dyna Prime has uh, gone in for various uh, tests and the customer has uh, given us an approval? So uh, if those approval were to be converted into the entire uh, conversion by the customer, what could our revenue potential be over the next year or two from the Dyna Prime, given where the trials have been successful? Yeah, sir? Yeah, I think there's a lot of forward-looking statement you want over there. But just to tell you what we have been maintaining right from the beginning, that as far as uh, Dyna Prime is con uh, concerned, we are going to grow at 30% CAGAS for the next two, three years. And uh, if you look at the figures that is happening today, uh, we are on line with that. Fair. Uh, um, on the non bill liner side, uh, we saw uh, a muted growth uh, last year. Could you just help us what was the key reason and what is the outlook that we are seeing currently? So again, as far as uh, non mill growth is there, Manoj has given some, uh, you the figure about the growth that we have done in the non mill also. Okay, so I think uh, the tragic, trajectory of the growth uh, is happening in all the three uh, uh, the verticals, which is Dana Prime, mill non Dana Prime, as well as the uh, non mill uh, uh, business. Sure. No, so the question was, uh, I mean, the lower growth versus the other two categories uh, in the non mill liner segment. Was there any specific reason uh, why our growth was lower last year and uh, why are we expecting the growth rates to move up? No, there is not a specific reason. What we have done in this year, I mean, we have also. Uh, taken out a vertical for non mills to concentrate on that. So I think uh, over the next uh, couple of quarters, it will start, I mean, it's already start giving some results. We, uh, the concentration on non mill will also uh, bring it into the growth trajectory that we are looking for in the other sector. Fair. Just last question, uh, how is the profitability uh, between uh, the Dyna Prime, uh, the conventional mill liners, and the non mill liner segment? No, no. no uh, so, Bhavis, as as we discussed last time also, that as of now, the, the margin in both the sides is more or less same. So, it is not something very, very, you know, differential margin in the Dyna Prime mill liner and non Dyna Prime liner. Dana Prime, Dana Prime mill liner help us in create the volume in the business, right? And the idea is to just to give a, you know, a push the Dana Prime in the market, which will help us to grab the market and ultimately to focus on price increase. So focus is basically today is on the getting more market share 
with the fact that the price input cost has gone up abnormally high last year at least we have been able to pass through those prices of now bearing one and one and a half percent gap i think that is what we are focusing on as of today sure yeah uh, these were my question thank you so much for taking my questions thank you <coughs> ladies and gentlemen to ask a question please star and one on your phone now we have a next question from the line of neeraj mansinka from white pine investment management private limited please go ahead yeah thank you i just had a question on how many sites you have right now in dyna prime including trials and installed i think i think we should uh, really go away with the number of sites because you know what is happening is the uh, if you see the revenue growth you have a very strong revenue growth it is basically a, on uh, the process of uh, trial and and uh, presentation in the various places so the growth of site and the growth of business both are going hand to hand so if you are looking at what uh, percentage of growth we have got close to around that we have the growth in the uh, number of sites over there i would not like to really specifically go into the number of sites in this call please. okay okay got it but could you share some color on the growth i, I understand you say 30% growth cagr for next few years but can you show some growth uh, color so that we can understand is it back end 400 uh, etc okay. right from the building right from the ipo what we have been saying is you know the process that we are going through where we are introducing in different uh, geographies the the dana prime as well as as of now today we have not dana prime working in uh, africa south africa uh, russia uh, in australia in canada and usa we have uh, put in a distance so latin america whatever has happened the results of that are being taken globally in latin america also we are looking at uh, getting into near customers which are uh, over there so as of now spread across globally we have number of sites on which we are working and depending upon the customers and the process they are having uh, number of sites will start coming into the picture which will reflect in both the order booking as well as the revenue growth that we will get from dana prime and and uh, looking at what has happened and is happening today I and mean, then 30% cagr is is uh, uh, given what we are looking at uh, in this year and the next uh, couple of years so one more question related with so if you talking about 30% cagr in dyna prime then why are uh, having a low guidance for 15 18% for next few years dyna prime has a low base yeah that we understand yeah. that low base so what is happening if you multiply the base of dana prime with the other bases which is going at uh, a different uh, trajectory then you get uh, the cumulative at 18 17 18 okay so we, so this is given i asked you was that what i have observed that non dana prime revenue also has been going reasonable number so that's reason i just asked that yeah so that's that's what is thinking if you look at finally when we look at dana prime is outstripping the growth in all the other Uh, 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 category and has a lower base. Once the base comes to the same level, probably Dana Prime will drive the uh, this thing. But as far as uh, uh, accumulated growth is concerned, of the all the category, then you get uh, uh, that uh, this thing based on 30% growth of uh, Dana Prime. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we are requested to restrict the number of questions to two per participant. We have our next question from the line of Kaval Ashar from DSP Investment Managers. Please go ahead, Mr. Ashar. Uh, please speak, sir. Uh, Mr. Ashar, I'm sorry, but we are not able to hear you. um sure i'll get back, get back in touch uh we could hear you now can you try okay um what is our right to win in hybrid mill liners compared to the ones manufactured by our global peers can you repeat your question please 
Yeah, sure. Uh, sir, what is our right to win in hybrid mill liners compared to our global peers? Global players, uh, peers, you want, I mean, uh, again, from right from the IPO, we are saying if you look at the uh, hybrid liner which our Dyna Prime Day is, there are two right. categories of the hybrid. One is the ball mill and the sag mill. In sag mill area, as of now, with a body of work, the only credible supplier is us. So our basic is disruption of uh, this thing compared to the uh, steel liners, how the steel liners are working and what the values we are delivering. Other, other peers are in the hybrid category. They have to uh, design and establish their product before you know they come up to the level that we are there. So. Most of them are uh, close to around two to three years behind us. Got it. Got it, sir. And the second question is, you mentioned 30% growth in Dyna Prime for the next few years. Of that 30%, yes. how much would be volume growth? I'm talking about volume growth only. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about volume growth. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So then how much would the would be the increase in realizations year on year for Dyna Prime? It depends. I mean, that's, again, that will be a little difficult to say because the pricing, costing, uh, freight, uh, everything, what's happening, it's a very fluid kind of a situation every year. We are, right from the beginning, we, we have told that we intend to keep the margin uh, as close to 60% as possible. And that is what we are going to do. And depending upon year to year, how the cost as well as the logistic cost can be passed on, we'll be doing that. Got it. Got it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Khadija Mantri from Sher Khan. Please go ahead. I request you to restrict your questions to two. Yeah. Uh, good evening, sir. My question is that in our portfolio, uh, is everything manufactured in house or do we have some imported components as well? No, no everything please. is in house manufacturing. Okay. And uh, sir, uh, who all are our competitors and is it possible or uh, to quantify the market share? Simam, sir. Yeah. If you. We have already, as far as the red herring prospect was there, we had already given the market share as well as uh, who are the major competitor. Major competitor is Metso uh, in the Diana Prime range where we are head on with uh, steel liner, it's Elect Metal, any uh, Bradken, these are there. And uh, as, of, as far as the global market share is concerned for uh, mill liners, we are we are inching to number four as far as the market uh, uh, share is concerned. And so there has not been any change given the global headwinds. Uh, is no change in the market share. Uh, as far as uh, 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 it's only a year we are talking. We are talking about the report which is a year old. So yes, yes, sir. Not major shift will occur in a year. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Thanks. That's all for my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. In the interest of time, this will be the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Nachiket Kale for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you all participants uh, who asked questions on this call. We thank for everybody to share their time and connection today. I'd also like to thank the management for taking all the questions and providing their insights. For any other queries, uh, you can get in touch with us. We, Orient Capital, are investor relation advisors to the industry. Uh, please take care, everybody. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Tega Industries, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. The conference is no longer being recorded.